I took it out today for the uh, for my second ride and as you can tell um, I didn't use all of the travel and so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the um, volume spacer that I have in the positive chamber um, and I'll explain that here in a little bit. So I'll give you a little bit of backstory. I've had uh, quite a few bikes um, in the last five, six years. And uh, I've been on Fox and Rock Shocks. And I really never had a reason to go outside of those two. But here's why I decided to go with DVO. And, and we're gonna specifically focus on the shock. Um, I just came off of a Capra. The Capra was the most plush, Yo! the most comfortable bike that I've ever been on. But anyways, I sold the Capra because it was not supportive. Um, it, it didn't fit my riding style. So I got on the Firebird because this one comes with the DW Link and you know, no matter where you look or read or watch or talk to people, you will always hear the same story. The DW Link is the most supportive suspension design uh, and it's got a great pedaling efficiency platform. I can now attest to that being true. It is, it's very supportive. Um, one thing that I found though, however, is that it didn't feel as plush as my Capra. And so this bike came with the Fox Performance uh, DPX2. It, it, it was supportive, but it just wasn't plush. And so I found myself um, now on the other side, right, of that, of that spectrum or that, that, the flip side of that coin. The Capra was plush, but not supportive. This one was supportive but not plush. That's why I got the Topaz because it has a reputation of it being supportive while at the same time being plush. All right, I know YouTube is going to uh, probably serve this video up to a lot of locals. And so um, if you've not done rabbit hole before, I'm gonna give you a, uh, a full pool of rabbit hole, upper and lower, and hopefully I can clear uh, a gap jump right after a berm and then uh, a road gap not too big but anyways so if you're not uh if you just want to continue watching the review of the shock just go ahead and forward to whatever the time is that i'm going to put down here and uh and we'll continue the review if you want to watch the full pool um let's go Not the cleanest, but I think I cleared it.
I am very, very happy um, with the Topaz. And uh, right off the bat with the recommended settings, it was it, it's just a noticeable difference. So with that, here's what you can expect when you buy the shock. Uh, it's $500 and it comes in a hard shell case that you can repurpose later on for tools or what have you. Um, inside you'll have uh, the shock pump, the shock of course, um, some volume spacers and a manual. I did not buy the hardware for this shock. Um, I used the existing hardware that I had uh, from my uh, DPX2. Um, that's what you can expect, right? And again, it's, it's very presentable. It's a very good looking shock. Now let's talk about functionality. And I am pretty darn impressed at how easy it is to tune um, the, this shock. The positive chamber um, controls how progressive the shock is, and that just basically means um, how much force it takes uh, for the shock to bottom out. Um, on the negative chamber, you put a volume spacer in there, and that'll help uh, with the supportiveness up top. With that, um, here's where I'm at. I have two in the negative. Uh, and that's because I am not, um, I, I have not been able to use all of the, uh, the, uh, the travel on this shock. But yeah, so I have no spacers in the positive chamber um, and I have two in the negative um, because I'm running a little bit less air now. Anyway, so I'm saying a whole lot, but that's pretty much uh, um, what I've been doing with the shock. But here's the thing, right? It's, it's how cool is that? Um, that you have those adjustability options. And even much better than that, it's how easy it is to do it. It takes literally like a couple of minutes max. The other thing that sets this shock apart, it's the bladder. Now, I don't know a whole lot about the technology of the bladder. I just know this, that you put air in it, um, and I think it's between 170 and 200 anyways it's stamped on there it's got a minimum right i think it's 170 so if you start off with 170 um the 170 range or the lower range will keep the bike planted um it'll keep it glued to the ground and i think the dvo uh refers to it as the monster truck setting and lastly right um in terms of um the difference or the pros and cons between dvo rock shocks and fox Here's the thing, uh, at least here's my opinion. Fox and rock shocks, I mean, World Cup winning uh, forks and shocks. Uh, there's, there's just, they're awesome, right? Um, the, it, but personally, why I think that I am not going back to either of them anytime soon, and I'm gonna stick around with DVO is, um, Fox, you know, you get the DPX2, um, and it's very supportive. It's, a, it's an all-around great shock. Uh, but in, st in terms of uh, tunability, I guess, um, it's pretty limited. Uh, the X2, on the other hand, it's got tons of adjustability. I don't know, I think it's, it's a little overwhelming for me, which is why I liked Rock Shock. Uh, Rock Shocks I like because it, it's not overwhelming in terms of all of the options that you have to tune it, but it gives you enough. However, um, I like DVO uh, better than those two, um, or I'm liking it better than those two, because it, it just makes logical sense the way that they've designed it to where you can adjust it without feeling overwhelmed. Um, and it's just so easy to do. Um, and it's not a whole lot uh, of adjustability options, but it's just enough. And it's just, it's pretty straightforward. It's really easy. Um, and the feeling, it's, it's incredible. Um, I know it, it may sound like I'm exaggerating. I, I can tell the difference. Um, it's got three positions, by the way. Um, it's got a lockout, which is really not a lockout. It gives you a probably about you know 20 percent travel um so it it does it's enough for those technical climbs 
Um, it's got the pedal mode, which I use it for pretty much um, anything here in my uh, local trails. I can leave it in that pedal mode or that pedal mode or that trail mode um, really all day long and it's going to be great on the way up and it's going to be amazing on the way down. Um, and then I got the open position, right? And that's for some big hits. Um, those are my thoughts on the DVO Topaz. It, it's completely changed um, how the bike feels. The bike felt amazing from the beginning, um, but it wasn't quite right for me, right? Like I mentioned earlier, it was a little bit too harsh um, on the end stroke there. And now it's just, now it's just right perfect. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope that you will come back for future videos. Um, if you've not subscribed, subscribe now, hit that like button, share it, and uh, I will see you soon. Until next time, ride faster, don't die, God bless.